following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this uh, 30th of July, and we're looking at a Dow down 70 at 25,381. The S&P is down 12 uh, to 2,808. You've got the Comp Index down even more. It's down 80, almost 90 points. At seven, is that a six? Good grief. Why is it getting so so distant? Let me just do this comp index, comp X. Um, here's a nine, right? Yeah, seven, six, four, eight, uh, down 89, 90 points. Huge peak F in the Chapman wave, peak D in the weekly chart, leg F in the monthly chart. Um, let's go on. We've got the, um, actually, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to go back. I'm going to do them one at a time. Look. The Dow is down 75 at 25,375. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for the most identifiable low bar to start each wave count to the upside. Real simple technique and is at its core. Um, you, are, you alphabetize uppercase on the way up. The letters, each higher peak gets uh, sequentially alphabetized. Peak A, then it goes to peak B. One penny above peak B starts leg C. Leg C becomes a peak C when there's a lower high bar. The moment it gets taken out by one penny, you get to D. You can go all the way to G, but it's that fourth highest peak over the years and years and years that I've been done it over the, uh, must be um, way over a quarter of a million charts that I've done. Gs are the where other things can happen. Just keep that in mind. What do I mean by that? Well, look. Back in January, on January the 26th, what did the Dow do? It went to a peak D at 26,616, had a Chapman Wave 2-bar reversal, and it came down to the 23,360 level, ran up, came back down, tested with an inside Chapman Wave D going to a, to a, lower, a low by 16 points. Then it runs up and goes to peak D on the 12th of June, 25,402. Pulls back to 23,970, again tests the 200-period moving average, that orange line. At a trough D, it gives you a rally, and the rally goes to where? It goes to uh, Thursday at 25,587. It goes to a peak D. So what do we do using the Chapman Wave methodology? Once again, we shorted at that peak D. So we've done that about three times. Now, the next thing we're looking at is in the weekly chart, you've got to a leg D. If there's no new high this entire week above 25,587, it too makes uh, a peak D. At two, Brutus, well, in this case, at two Dow. And what we're looking at is that the monthly chart so far is absolutely a fantastic candle. What happens next is going to be very important. Um, on a very short-term basis for my subscribers, a very detailed report. If you're interested in learning techniques, if you want a methodology, if you want to have a study work that is live, because we actually take the trades whenever we can, whenever I get it right uh, in terms of entry points and exit points, then the, my opening call is really a, a very thorough uh, technical daily analysis uh, chart and charting method. So what we're looking at here on the short term is that we went to a 120-minute chart, peak G, or a C1, C2 double top at the 25,587 level on the 26th of July. And that started to move down and goes to trough A, bounces, fails to make a new high, comes down to 25,370 trough B, Chapman Wave 3, goes to Chapman Wave 4, gray peak A, that is failing, and then right now we are about to start at 25,368. We have just started leg C to the downside, and that is a Chapman Wave 5. Fives can sometimes accelerate. We're going to have to watch this real closely. And you've got the MACD and the stochastic turning down sharply in the 120-minute chart. But what's really important is that we've got that D in the daily chart, and we've got the MACD in the daily chart still holding really well, still very strong. So what I'd say to subscribers is we need 
to see a cover story of negative news because uh, the MACD is so strong. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think the negative news is going to be that the FANG stocks are really taking a dive. Um, so let's go on. We've got our story yet to follow. <clears throat> S&P made a peak E. Uh, Bobby sent me an email this morning. You see a D note was an E. You might have missed this little tiny one right here that it was a peak C. The last peak D at 2791.47 on the 13th of June. So a very sharp pullback under 2700. We ran to the 28th. Um, 48.03 high on the 25th and pulling back sharply here to confirm the peak E. Just about to test the 14 period exponential moving average. The close below it would not be good. That would send the MACD and stochastic very negative. And it's a leg D yet again in the weekly chart. How many Ds are we seeing? Look, uh, this is a D in the at the 28.72 top of the 26th of January. In the weekly chart, it was the week of the 29th plunges down to the 2550s, uh, rallies sharply, comes back down, does a successful retest, unlike the Dow, which was an unsuccessful test, and then it turned around. But here, they both turned around and ran to a leg D, probably a peak D, if no new high above 20, uh, 28, 48.03 is made this week, and you've got your peak D in the monthly chart. Wow. Let's go to the QQQ, one, two, three. The Q's made a peak D in the weekly chart, if there's no new high this week. But it did extend to a leg E at 182.93 in the Invesco QQQ Trust series, trading at 175.15 down 2.46. Really sharp move to the downside. Negative MACD, negative stochastic, negative price. This is serious stuff. And it's going to drag the down, the other indices down with it. Um, looking at key support in the 174 area um, and resistance is now at 176.30. And you've got the IWM. Whoops, see, that IWM is down now. It was up a little bit earlier, down 42 cents at 164.86. It is now trading underneath, I said, for months now. A close below 166. Uh, weeks, I'm saying not months. A close below 165. That's what I'd say. 165 would be very negative. We're at 164.83. And the uh, weekly chart is has 160. Uh, what is that right there? Has 164, yeah, let's go 163.80 in the weekly chart. The close below that, that will be negative. And the monthly chart is still pretty good, but the candle is starting to fade with one and a half days to go before the month of July ends. Oh, what a pity. I miss this. Um, all right, let's go to gold. Gold should be rallying a little bit here. Uh, it's down 0.3. Wow, it's struggling. Uh, it's at 1232.4. Um, it needs to get to the, now it has to get to the 1245 area to show that it not only has bounce material, but it has rallying material and a change of trend. Ah, it's going to be tough to do, but let's see if it can do that. Must hold 12. Uh, this is now, uh, this is a continuous contract. So that's smoothed out. Now the low is 1220.3. Uh, it has to hold 1218 uh, this week. Otherwise, it's got a real problem. The silver, same thing. Silver. <clears throat> Is trying to rally a little bit. It's up 0.03. A little bit better chart. Silver needs 15.85 and then holding the 16.20s. That'll be very, very good action. Ah, I'm a little ahead of the game today. So let's go to the dollar index. The dollar is down a little bit. Dollar's down 39 cents. It's going to be testing the 94.10 area. I'll be right back. That's a chapter down to 95. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back, and uh, we're looking at the Dow, as I said, down 98 to start that uh, accelerated move. Now it has to find so it, uh, that was the move from minus 40s to the minus 90s. Now it has to find some support. Oh, it's going to get a little ugly. Um, okay, so the dollar's down 39 cents. No big deal. It's in that trading band. But slowly the weekly chart is arching over. Slowly the stochastic is now at 80%, having been up in the 83, 85%, even the 90s. So I'm watching this really closely, not because I think that the dollar is going to tank at this particular point, because I think this is still part of the two months consolidation that we've been looking at. You know, when, when currencies change a trend, they change a the trend, they stay there for a long time. Um, so I'm thinking that the uptrend is still intact, but this is a consolidation that we've been anticipating. We've been long for my subscribers since the 6th of April, down to the 90 level. It's now 9427, having hit 9565. Yeah, I think we can consolidate, maybe go to the 9377, even come back to the 200 period moving average of 93 in the weekly chart. Uh, but most importantly, if I'm looking at gold, this is this week is going to be the opportunity. If the dollar slides about 30 or 50 cents further to the downside, slide obviously mean to the downside, this is the opportunity that the gold should really move. You know, talking about gold, a lot of people say, oh, you know what, maybe gold, because the Bitcoin, GBTC, Bitcoin has taken over as kind of a, a, a focal point for, for uh, I can't even say for younger investors are first of all i don't know if they're younger secondly they're definitely not necessarily investors uh for those people interested in bitcoin once it became a fad last year going into the december january topping period and i'd say forget about those 30 40 50 60 thousand levels that everybody everyone that came on to cnbc that i heard or even read about would be told those are the numbers that they were talking about in fact a lot of them said it's that's the low side and I kept saying, no, they're very lucky if they don't see much, much lower lows um, than we're starting to see. And in fact, what happened is it came down. Now we've had a leg D that went to a peak D, a doji peak D. I was going to mention this on Thursday. I, I think I did say that on Thursday. But on Friday, I got a confirmation. Once it hit the 14 period moving areas, there's GBTC, the Bitcoin Investment Trust. I don't think that there's a relationship yet between a gold. Bitcoin and the general stock market investing mentality. 
I think they're the signs and the symptoms. I would not be surprised when the big, big top comes uh, that a lot of money has been siphoned off into something like whatever the Bitcoin of the, of the day is in, in that stage. But at this particular point, I think Bitcoin still has a problem. Look at that horrible lower lows and lower highs and tiny rallies in the weekly chart that can't get going. Be careful. And this is what I say to subscribers to my opening call. I'm not going to feature this as, a, as a, something we follow. I'll periodically mention it because I often get uh, questions about it from subscribers and others uh, who listen to TFNN. I'm, I'm sorry. It hit the 200 period moving average of 12.21. It's kind of stuck. That's still a magnet. And the 11.23 uh, 14 period exponential moving average should be a propellant. So it should be stuck in a kind of an oval pattern between 12. I'd say 1250s and eleven dollars for a little while longer, but I'm not looking at this yet as something that's going to really start a new big move to the upside. Let's go to high grade copper, high grade copper, like wood, which is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. They'd be very disappointing. It's way down the lower level until it can get back to three. I just think it's stuck in the lower range. And if you go to wood, which is uh, if Woodstock, Woodstock, Wood, how much wood would Woodstock stock? If Woodstock, Woodstock, Wood. My father's famous uh, expression that he used to use. I don't know where he got it from, uh, but he he was he had a, a factory, a woodwork factory back in South Africa, and he got wood from Woodstock. Funnily enough, okay, trading at seventy five forty eight peak F. I'm changing this. I should have done that here. I did it in my my weekly chart that I show my subscribers every weekend. Yep, a sell mode in the weekly, let alone the daily, and the sell signal is real close in the monthly chart, but it's not there yet. Monthly chart is still holding very well. It's a weekly chart that says at 75.47, real good chance it's going to test the 74 to 73 level and then be stuck in a range. Not a good sign if you look at the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Index, stuck in the lower range, not that good. If you look at interest rates, uh, the TLT, uh, trying to rally off a leg, E to the downside after a sell mode, signal at 122.92 peak E in the daily chart. That weekly chart says, hey, don't get excited. We've seen this pattern before. It's just stuck in a range. And if you look at the TNX, TNX.X, look, stuck in a range. Uh, leg D right now, he has that range. And I was talking about peak F in the, in the weekly chart. I think it's just rectangle formation. Rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. Crude oil. Uh, crude oil, let's see where that is, was up, yep, up a dollar thirty eight is seventy point oh seven. My contention is still the seventy one thirties, maybe fifties. I'm only watching that because a break above that into the seventy twos, that would be really good action. And a pullback makes the sixty eight to sixty six fifty area absolutely key support. And I, I so far I think it's going to hold. What's really important about the crude oil, I was asked what was the question. Uh, could you do an analysis of analysis of the question? Yeah, analysis of the XLE. I don't know if I have time right now to do the XLE analysis. What I will just say is that if you look at the monthly chart, look at this. Let me open this up nicely. There we go. Look, it looked great when we we're looking at the monthly chart close up. But wait a minute. If I put it in perspective, you see this dashed trend line right here, slightly rising um, up channel in the mid-range uh, resistance. Yeah, that's just like a magnet at 77.16. So the question about the XLE is that I think there's still internal strength. I also think there's internal weakness, funny enough. And because of it, I think it's stuck. It's at 77.16, up 53 cents. <clears throat> this is a new leg C. It's a second leg C. Often this entails looking at it and saying, oh, ho, oh, is this a now Chapman wave overlapping um, wave that goes to at least the leg D and then comes back and retests the breakout point. I would say that the characteristics here, I'm thinking that that's probably the case. This is going to be gray C, gray C. And this is a peak C right here at 70, 78 round number high on the 10th of July. Um, I think it's kind of stuck in a range, but this looks very much like a cup and ladle. Sorry, it looks like a cup and handle. It hasn't broken out yet. I I think there's a chance it could go a little higher, maybe test the, just one penny above 78, goes to 78.01 and leg D, and then I can maybe see 20 cents, and then I think it pulls back into the range again. 
It's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So the analysis says it's got very strong support in the 76.30 to 75.97 area. If it closes under 75.80 this week, that's negative. But if it manages to hold here and even has a slightly higher high than today's 77.56 level, I think it's going to make a leg D just above 78 and then probably come back into the range again. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Question is, uh, EEM. Now, let's do some of this foreign stuff. EEM is the Emerging, uh, Emerging Markets ETF, trading 44.60, down 9 cents. It's gone to a leg C, gray leg C, and this says to me that... I don't want to rush it. It says to me that EEM is finding a little bit of support, but it's really not a good looking chart. We'll do that together with the FXI, which is China, the big China index, the uh, iShares China large cap. I'll be right back. Down, down TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Take or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, just looking at the E-mini, you see you've got a peak E in the 10-minute chart just before 10 o'clock, around about the 28th. I think it was around 28, uh, was it 20, about 28.20. Now we're at 28.04. This is where you can start to see the 10-minute attempt to flatten out a little bit, the uh, uh, this was in the E mini five minute chart. What was that? Wasn't that a peak F? Yep, a peak F at that same level, and now we're in a trough E F. So I, I, yep, trough F. This is a very important moment. Why? Because down 13.50 in the E mini, uh, there's a September contract. 
the daily has attempted four, three or four times to try to find that momentum for the turnaround. But when you get a leading indicator like the QQQs uh, coming down, oh, oops, I typed in the wrong place. Let me just, I didn't need to type it there. Let me, let me just show you something very interesting. When you get the big caps, like a Facebook, look at this, Facebook is down again, down six after that peak F um, top. Now, I had said peak, it was a peak C. I went through this a number of times over the weekend. Everything about it, I, I believe I said this, but I had to go with what I typed. What I said is everything about it looks like it should be an F. There's earnings. Maybe it pulls back on earnings and then makes a D. That just seemed like a far-fetched scenario. Either it was going to spike up huge or it was going to break down. So Facebook's trading at 219 just a couple of days ago. Now it's at 168 point, 168. So, um, and this is a peak GL turn account in the weekly. And the leg E is absolutely correct. But this is the first time that I, I had to do a whole bunch of re-notating to be able to get it to kind of figure out what, what it is. I, I'm probably going to say that this might really be the first time an all-time high in a weekly chart at peak C minus. Yeah, I, I, I have every legitimate reason to be able to say peak G after the fact, but during the fact that really looked like a C. So this says to me, Facebook is one of the few stocks that has kind of defined the Chapman Wave methodology, um, not in the monthly chart, but definitely in the weekly chart. Hey, but look at Google. I spent so much time on this. Remember before the earnings, I said, I don't know. Google looks to me like it's showing all the different signs of uh, topping, but it made a leg E on Friday, closed almost at the low, now it's gapped down. I'm watching Google because this is definitely an E in the daily. It is a D in the weekly chart unless there's a new high above the all-time high of 12, uh, 73.89. And there was a 1231.00 round number low. So 1231 is the level to watch closely. And any time in the next two weeks, if there is one close above 1231, it says, be careful, it can retest the highs, it can even go a little higher. That's going to be tough. Google, peak D in the weekly chart is more likely, and a leg F, I'm watching it very closely in the monthly chart. All of these could recycle, but this is the way it is right now. Amazon, you remember Amazon? We were looking at this, and I thought, wow, a monster, a monster stock. Now, what does it do? It screams to a leg F on Friday after looking like it was 150 points down from Thursday's earnings report, and then screams to plus 88, and then it spikes higher to 880.05 on the 27th. And today, big three big red candles so far. I would suggest to you that we are having a little problem with the, the FANG stocks, that's two A's, Apple and Amazon, and that I'm watching this long-legged doji at peak F slash C in the weekly chart, a close below let me make it very clear. A close below 1769. I'm just going to say a close below 1765. I want to see a little traction there. Would be very negative for me on the short term, but I still have to say intermediate term until it, Amazon closes under 1700. It's still an amazing stock. Even now, look how resilient it is. One more is Apple. Um, Apple PE made three days ago. Leggy. Then peak E confirmed on Friday. It has 195.56 high on the 26th. I'm just looking for some round numbers. Oh, wow, just missed a round number. Okay. And that, that was a peak E in the daily, but it's a leg E in the weekly, unless there's a new a recovery high this week, and a leg D in the monthly. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I don't know about shorting Apple because it's really a fantastic company and they're really – their business is business. In other words, I don't think it's just products, introducing products. It's the the the, the upping of um, any kind of uh, any anything that you have from Apple. If you re-up your subscription or whatever it is, that's really what they're doing. They have a lot of people. You go to any Apple store, wherever I drive, wherever I'm around, and I see an Apple store, I always glance in. And I like to see how many people are waiting. And they have so many of the older folks that are there to, to, to do stuff on their iPads or on their cell phones. They've got a, they've got a very lucrative business there. In, um, so it's almost like a, it's like a subsidy or something that they have. So I think that as a short, I would, 
not be looking at Apple as a short. I'd be looking at Apple as saying steady between a range. If, if it comes down to the 175, 170 area, let's have a look at it. Maybe that's going to be where you want to buy it. And then you start to lighten up as it gets back up again. Uh, it's a great company, but I'm watching it because if at any point in the next two months, I see Apple decisively trading under 175. That's 14. It's a long way down from your 14 points. I'm going to have a look at it to say, wait a minute, is that monthly finally turning down? All right, enough with that. Another question. So that was the EEM, and I went to the to Apple because what I want you to do is to say, if the FXI, which is the <clears throat> it is the iShares China Large Cap ETF. Had made a peak F. This is a beautiful look at this in the Chapman Wing methodology. Look at the techniques here. It makes a left side, right side cup formation, not quite a cup, but a left side, right side, with a Chapman Wing inside track target line that it gets to very nicely. And at 54 round number high, it pulls down the week uh, in January of 2018. That's the same month that the Dow and the SP have topped out so far. It pulls back quite sharply. It's now under the nine period moving average, under the 14 period moving average. Nagdi's, these, we've got a two days to go, a day and a half to go. Nagdi's these cross negative, but we've got the candles not done yet for the month. The stochastic's very negative, and the on balance volume's holding kind of okay. So, FXI, and this has to do with Apple, I think it has to do with a lot of things. How does the FXI act, big caps? Because it will be influenced by tariffs and other things like that. So, this is one I, I want to keep my eye on. So I don't know if I even answered the question. What was the question? Uh, e e M E W Z. Oh, I haven't updated E W Z. That's Brazil, right? Yep, Brazil. This is a peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, E, F. Made a peak F, struggling a little bit in the daily at peak F. Monthly, a weekly chart is uh, between 35.64 is the 9 period moving average and 38.36 is the 200 period orange one in the weekly chart. It's trading down 6 cents at 36.67. And the monthly chart has gone to peak A, peak B, C, D, and lo and behold, E gives you a big pullback uh, from the 46s uh, down to the 31, 32 area. Now it's trading at 36.66. Um, oh, so the question is what to do. I would keep an eye on Brazil. I, don't, I wouldn't be buying it right now. Probably if it pulls back to 35, uh, between 35 and 34, that's when I will have, a, have another look at it because I want to see is the weekly improving as it pulls back. But EWZ, this is the uh, iShares Brazil ETF. Uh, it's acted very well, but right now I think it's getting a little bit vulnerable. I wouldn't be surprised if it pulls back a point, point and a half over the next two weeks. Uh, we'll come back, we'll look at XLI Caterpillar. Triple M and YouTube, I'll be right back. Thousand Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9:30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. I should just also mention uh, congratulations to uh, uh, subscriber L who... Uh, told me uh, recently that he'd gone all in short, but then he had covered quickly, and he's gone back into all short, all the indices. Um, Thursday or Friday, congratulations. That was a stupendous uh, move and, and courageous because it was a very mixed market, so congratulations. We do are short, but uh, not as short as I'd like to be. Uh, well, we still have long positions. We still have that UTX on the 119th, uh, a little bit left, and it's uh, trading at 133. Look at this UTX. But just before I go I, uh, out of this chart, look, the E-mini has gone to the 2802 level. It took out the 2806 support. 2802 here, this is, it's just making lower lows and lower lower highs. It, it just refuses to close above any of the key in, uh, uh, moving averages, both in the two-minute and the five minute but the the 10 minute is not even close so you would have to go to 2805 from the 2801 uh, level right now to even show some degree of strength this is this could get really ugly um all right now what i wanted to say is that within the context of the different markets so utx for subscribers we are still long i'll make a decision about what we're going to do this is the one that i thought if we could hold it and it does well all the way through any correction in the summertime, that would be very important because it could turn out to be that UTX is one of our down market leaders on the upside, perhaps with a couple of the financials. So that's interesting. So far, it's not bad. 113 was 136.66 uh, just three days ago. So it's about three points down. Uh, Triple M, I'm waiting to buy Triple M. I think it's acted extremely well. There's a price uh, that we're looking at, and it's really quite a lot lower. Um, I might even change that, but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. So I've been watching that. And what was the other question? What, what are we looking at? Uh, Caterpillar. Oh, and Caterpillar came out with earnings. They're up at $1.34 in leg C, but way down at the bottom part of this cup formation. I suspect that, you know, I haven't put a down arrow. Um, I should have put a down arrow because of the close last month, the red. Well, but the way it held the nine period moving average and bounced now from the 14 period a moving average in the monthly over the nine, I kind of think that's impressive, but I, I don't really want to buy it. So I'm just giving you right now if Caterpillar at 143.88 closes in the next three days below 140.10, um, that's not good news. Not good news at all. It needs to get to the 147s and it needs to do that pretty quickly. Uh, so that was there. Um, next question. I had a good question because um, I thought about this a lot. As I said it for subscribers, I said we'll see if there's going to be end of the month buying as usual. And then the question came in, how often have you seen end of month selling versus buying? 
end of month buying could be a brain teaser, and uh, for especially for our short positions. So far, not. I think that our short positions are the correct positions. They're not the very best. The one I wanted Friday that I just because I was in a rush to kind of finish. I was running a little late, and I wanted to get it done. Then the GDP report came out, and I had to kind of assess that within two, three minutes, because 8.30, 8.35 is when I send out my newsletter. I skipped saying, let's short the uh, the IWM. A big mistake, it would have been up huge, because we would have got the TZA, which is three times short. I, you know, I can't complain. We got we got nice positions. The other thing is we did take an 8% and a 6 eight point and a 6-point gain on the IBB, uh, which we were along from the 110.79 level. Uh, so we took um, a, a nice gain, 8%, about an almost 8%, almost 6% as well, um, off some of it. And I might just get out of this. I don't like the action right now. I might say, you know what, subscribers, we've still got a real nice gain on this. I don't think it's going to participate in this next move. The weights come down in five sessions from the 120 level to 114. And that makes that cup formation in the monthly ch weekly chart Highly suspect as as holding the 112.62 14 period moving average, so we might get out of that as well. So um, next question I had was Boeing. I haven't done Boeing. Is Boeing down? Yeah, down seven, down six and a half at 354.26 peak D. How many peak Ds? Look at the peak D right there on the 7th of June at 374.48 plus the 372 round number open. And now what do we get? We get. 364.54 is the high of the 27th. Any round numbers? Not yet. Not yet. That's okay. This is a peak D. I, I said before, the cup formation going to a second cup like a double U, that's where the word, the letter W comes from, double U, is going to fail. And my experience with this pattern is that eventually it actually takes out the left side low of import, the first one, which would be this low right here, week of the 29th of uh, June at 327.29. But if that's taken out, it's really quick to take out the low of importance, 311.17 of the 30th of March. So I think uh, I, I'm very suspect of Boeing. I think it's they could have backlogs to the, to the end of the time. It doesn't matter. I think on a shorter term basis, they're somewhat vulnerable to profit taking off the huge move to the upside. Next question I had was, GE, what is GE up today? Oh, it's up nine cents. Whoa, GE is up a whopping nine cents, up 0.09, a 13.15, horrible looking chart. I, I think it will, I, I'm gonna put it on my list for not as a Dow stock, because there's not any more, first time since 1890, whatever it is. Um, this is 1890, not the price, but 1890 the year. Uh, well, wasn't Levi building making jeans in those days? Yeah. So, all right, what we are looking at is that GE sometime will start doing the right thing, but it's not yet. Um, next question is, any calls? Any calls? 877-927-6648. Don't, I don't see no calls. Uh, uh, GT says, uh, Dow, uh, uh, dollar call VIX expiration, very active, multiple strikes. Higher volatility into end of September. Wow, okay, September. The VIX trading at 14.36, up $1.33. Right now, midterm election cycle says August, September week on average. You know, I that's the way I'm looking at it. I think we're in this phase right now. I'd say to subscribers, for people who want to put longer term money to work, let's have patience. When the Dow, if the Dow, when and if the Dow gets to the 24,300 to 23,800s, that's where I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm going to be watching also the very closely the VIX, because if the VIX is going to have the spike into the 40s, which if this is a serious sell-off, you can expect something to happen. Um, it's the timing of when that's going to happen. The last time was way back February. You remember that major sell-off and the VIX went to 50.30. I got a feeling we're going to be anticipating some kind of selling that goes to that kind of a climax up in the very high numbers. Uh, next question is Fed funds. Sarah says Mickey, Mickey Levy, bond guru, said Fed funds under 2.9% inflation rate. So this causes S&P to rally regardless and therefore won't see downtrend. Well, Mickey, I hope the Mickey's not taken out of here because. Um, I think there's a slight separation between the yields 
No, I, I, no I'm not going to get into that now. I've been thinking about this a lot. I'll talk about it some other time. What I do want to say is that the momentum of going to the FANG stocks, turning around to the downside, and my um, Chapman Wave Cash Index, these are the things I'm looking at. I'll be right back. Down down 130. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. So, yeah, quick, quick, a quick question. I'll do the IYT because that covers uh, what Sarah wants to look at and those different stuff. But IYT went to a leg in today. This is the iShares, uh, the transportation index, basically. Uh, we'll see what happens. So far, it's a good action. Uh, up 51 cents at 197.66. So I'll do I'll do the individual stocks tomorrow. We don't have time right now. But if this actually pulls back from 197.66 and closes, it has to close. I don't care if it goes there and bounces up. I want to see a close below 194.80 in the next three or four sessions. If it does that, that's going to say, whoops, that's impacting the weekly chart and then maybe the monthly chart. So watch it closely. You're pushing to the, from two, 201 higher is really good action if it can get there. Um, so my cash index, which I developed a little while back, um, is has cash. I'll put cash, and that's minus 1.45. Interesting. No, I mean the cash index, which is CTS, Syntas, uh, trading down 3 at 201.93. Fabulous earnings just three days ago. Makes an all-time high of 210 something or other. Let me just see this quickly. 210.38 and is trading right now down at 201 
Uh, seven points, not a big deal, but the speed is the issue. Possible leg D in the weekly, leg E in the monthly, Apple, uh, Amazon, Amazon right now, as I said before, down 39, uh, not good. Uh, but the weekly chart and monthly chart still holding well. SPY, which is the S&P SPY uh, deposit receipt, trading down at 279, down to $1.76. PE, leg D uh, weekly. These are all very important at Home Depot. Home Depot peak D daily, and it hasn't gone to a new all-time high that it made it peak F in the monthly, uh, in the weekly chart, 207.61. I'm watching this because at any point, yes, you could get a sudden burst of energy, but the fact that you've now got the leaders, the FANG leaders pulling back says that they could now drag, at least for another day or so, drag the general market lower. But if the Dow... The Dow right now, which is really not down anywhere close to what the others are, 7.44%. Uh, if the Dow is able to hold very well and actually try to tackle the 25,480 uh, area in the next day or two on the upside, uh, maybe the Dow will hold better. So we're watching it very closely. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and have a great day. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Congratulations to you, TFNN, for moving this studio. And, uh... No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.